All right. Defects in membranes are characteristic of all chronic medical conditions, including cancer. Even in a normal aging process, they just go bad. But you have to have the bacteria to create the enzymes to, to protect the membranes. It's basically that's your immune system. Is bacteria creating ribosomes and the ribosomes just free floating around and if they're needed they pop open. Okay my friends everywhere in your body you have this layer called the interstitium. They didn't even know about it. It says meet your interstitium newfound organ. This is 2018. That's not long ago. And what's housed in here is your lymph fluids. Your, this is a fluid-filled highway, they call it now. It goes through in, everywhere in your body. Everywhere. And it's the lymph fluids that carry the ribosomes and the bacteria in this very fine fluid, which is absorbed back into the body very, at the very end of the colon. And it's, uh, it carries all of the products that are in the bacteria, I, I would believe that you could find the same products in the bacteria that's down at the colon up here at the lungs. It's going to be in in the fluids because it's a, it's a continuously flowing fluid highway. It's called the interstitium, a brand new organ now. See, this just shows how little they know about the fluid-filled highway. It said the gut isn't simply one consistent environment. Of course not. It goes all the way through your digestive system. And here's in quotes, he says, there are microbes along the entire intestinal tract. We just study the predominantly the last third of it, which is the colon, where every, the poop collects. So how can you expect an FMT with microbes from a third of the intestinal tract at the end of it to fix the rest of the intestine? It's coming from all the way down, all the way down, all the way down. It collects in the colon, yes. It ferments in the colon, yes. Once it gets back into the membranes, it takes off through the fluid-filled highway. They just are having a hard time understanding the, the, the basic biology of the human body. All right, I think RFK Jr. would understand that it's up to the patient to decide to take the chance on FMT bacterial replacement rather than have the government stand in the way of that. That is just not correct. I have a friend who has multiple sclerosis and it's not good and he needs to have a fecal matter transplant at, at least to try because it's it's, a, it's such a debilitating thing and all chronic diseases have the same issue they're not producing bacteria or, or I'm sorry the bacteria are not there to produce the enzymes. If you don't have the bacteria, you're not going to get the enzymes. It's as simple as that. The bacteria create ribosomes. I'm, I'm showing this over and over and over. I'm just going to keep showing it until somebody pays attention. The bacteria create ribosomes, and millions of these can fit in one single human cell. They're just everywhere, and they are there to do the chemistry. And they just float around in here. They could collect out here on a rough endoplasmic reticulum to protect the nucleus and the DNA and so forth. But when you lose that bacteria and you lose that ribosome and it's not in there to do the protection, you end up with damage. And this is the kind of damage. It says, hey, I'm supposed to be a myelin sheath and I'm supposed to have this set of, of stringy little bits and pieces. Well, guess what? This is missing because the bacteria is not there to make it, which is the enzyme. And all of a sudden it gets cracks. These holes are breaking. All right, I'm sorry, we have an interruption there. It, it, myelin sheathing is a very slippery, slimy, stretchable, elastic coating that coats all of these 
nerve fibers and the neurons. If it isn't exactly correct in its flexibility and all that stuff, and you get what's called a loose junction, and it can break open, these things will start to collect in there or cause trouble. I think I've gone over this, but this is so important to understand. Only thing that can make this good and make this product is, is enzymes. And the only way you get the enzymes is if they're ribosomes just floating around doing what they're supposed to do and fixing things as they break. And the only way to get those ribosomes floating around and doing what they're supposed to do is to have a bacteria that creates them and that specific species of bacteria. And if you kill that species, it's not, you're done. You're going to be chronically ill. Oh, I can't eat this. I can't do this. I, my legs won't work. My this or that. You know, and autism, the whole nine yards. You look up literally any disease, irritable bowel, all of them, all up, up to autism, Alzheimer's, Parkinson's. They just came out, oh, I don't know, not long ago, about Parkinson's. I had here, it's right here. Parkinson's linked to gut bacteria suggests unexpected simple treatment. I got one just a couple of days ago. They've linked two proteins, which are nothing more than enzymes, which come from bacteria to MS. It's it's just it is what it is, and it's got to be taken seriously. It's got to be worked on really quickly. And I don't think this and it certainly should not be disallowed. If you had MS, you would want to try it. And he does. Now, yeah, if you go to Canada or to Mexico or somewhere like that, and, and all that business, no, it's not just not right. It's just not right. And I think Kennedy should take this into account. We don't want kids with autism. We all Their guts are being assaulted by all the kind of things that they're eating, just like he said. All these processed foods, they've got nitrates in them, they've got all kinds of pesticides and chemicals, and I don't know what they have in them. To protect them, to preserve them. You want to preserve them, yes, but you don't want that going into your bacteria in your body and saying, hey, we don't want any bacteria working around here because we don't like bacteria on our food. Well, you don't like bacteria on the food, yes, I agree with that, but once it gets in your body, what happens? And what about the, the glyphosate, the, the weed killer? That stuff is going to get in your body, no question about that. And it is going to be in there, and it is going to be like a, a herbicide against your bacteria, I would assume. If they can prove it isn't, I'd like to see it. I'd like to see that. Take, you know, I, it can easily be proven one way or the other. I'd like to see the proof of it, because they, they said, oh, yeah, yeah, we know what we're talking about. Well, show us the proof. Anyway. All right, here's what I'm asking for. Doctors should be able to give their, their patients fecal matter transplants if the patient wants it. If the patient asks for it and there's any reason whatsoever, or even just because they want to get more energy. Because all of that stuff is going to dwindle as you get older and older. And they're developing, you know, showing Alzheimer's and Parkinson's. They're all affected positively by fecal matter transplants. And the only reason they know that is because it was just a coincidence of being treated for Clostridium difficile, which was the only thing they'll let you even have it for. Now, people that have multiple sclerosis and, and Alzheimer's and every other thing, autism, they should at least be allowed to make their own decision on their own. It's just not right to restrict such a simple process as this. This is not a big, huge, big thing. And it's these, you know, digestive bacterial replacements. It's, it's just 
something that should at least be tried in these desperate conditions that these people find themselves in. To be denied is just not right, especially in autism and multiple sclerosis and all the rest of them too. Every chronic disease is because you don't have the enzyme to produce the product you need when you need it. Basically, that's it. Every chronic illness is membrane related, which means you're not taking care of that membrane. How come you're not taking care of it? You don't have the bacteria to produce the enzymes. All comes back to the bacteria. All right, this is the National Institute of Health. Multiple sclerosis patients undergoing fecal microbiota transplant, which stood the test of time, the longest follow-up showing rem remission even after 15 years with no side effects. They were cured, basically. And uh, this is very distressing. It's not allowed, even for autism, same thing. This is the uh, National Center for Biological Information, National Inf Institute of Health. Potential role of FMT in reversal or stabilization of multiple cirrhosis, a literature review efficacy and safety. Did it work and is it safe? They have found yes, it did work and it is safe. Our findings suggest that all 15 patients who received FMT experienced improved and reversed neurological symptoms after the secondary to MS. Improvement was sustained even in follow-up years with no adverse effects observed. These results indicate that FMT may hold promise as a treatment option for multiple sclerosis, although further research is necessary. This is a couple of years ago. Can't they do this research? Why is this a problem? There was a place that was going to do the fecal matter transplants, and the, the government made it so hard, they finally shut down because they had the, the paperwork was too much. They said, there's nothing wrong with the product. The product is perfect. It's going to help millions of people. But the government made it so rigorous that they finally had to shut down. Yeah, the last I knew they shut down, this is open biome has ceased investigational FMT distribution due to FDA decision to end enforcement discretion. I don't know what this means, but I know they finally gave up. And the only thing they make it for is reoccurrent C. difficile, which is basically the only thing way you can treat it. But at the same time, they found out everybody else was getting healthy from all of their other conditions being treated for the C. difficile. Here's another one, effective fecal matter transplant in children with autism. Compared with the baseline, fecal matter transplant significantly improved symptoms of autism in children. Now they need more observational studies. Here's right here. This is FMT for treating um, Alzheimer's. Numerous studies shown FMT can, can improve Alzheimer's disease. Frequent fecal microbiota transplant improved cognition. Oral fecal microbiota just feasibility study in Alzheimer's. They say now you can take it orally with these pills and it, it, it will do it. Before you had to do it gastrointestinal like a colonoscopy. But this is for everything, virtually for everything. Here it is right here, London Health Center. Inside a cancer researcher lab, unlike unlocking the gut microbiome potential in the fight against cancer. And it's 100% of the cancers because 100% of the cancers involve breakthrough of the membranes. They even found that it's, it's helping in peanut allergies and food allergies with kids. If they can't work with what's going into their body, they don't have the, the digestive ability, it's going to either damage them or it's just going to go right through. And in the case of peanuts and so forth, the kids, they eat them and they die. All right, one more time. Damage to these membranes are characteristics of all chronic medical conditions, every single one, 100%. And we know for a fact that the ribosomes they're produced by bacteria 
are the only thing that can create these enzymes. And they come out and they float around, free floating through your body. They collect in the rough endoplasmic reticulum in the cells, but there's millions of them, e even in each cell. And they can create these enzymes and proteins. Now, they're finding that as if you have the right bacteria in your gut with a fe fecal matter transplant, getting somebody's good bacteria inside of you and it starts growing, you're done. It's all over. No more pills, no nothing. I, I, you know, I, I hate to feel that that could be the reason why we're getting nowhere with this because this is so obvious, it's just unbelievable. And I've been tracking this now for about six, seven years really deeply because I work with a group in, uh, in uh, Ireland, Northern Ireland, that, that uh, we've literally reverse a kid from autism, turn to non-verbal, he was going to be put in a locked ward by using the right enzymes. Because you can't, can't, you can't do the fecal matter transplant over there either. They won't let you do it. So we had to figure out what enzymes to give them. And soil-based bacteria seem to have uh, the, the, the right stuff. And, but it's got to be taken four times a day because it uses up these enzymes very, very quickly. They're doing their job, but they're doing it, you know, in massive scales. Because we more, more of us is bacteria than is us. There's so much bacteria, and even in your poop, half of the poop is, is actual bacteria. The bacteria is doing so much work in us, it's unbelievable. So in order to supplement it, you have to be, you know, over and over and over and over and keep putting it in like four times a day. That's crazy. If the bacteria was living in there from a fecal matter transplant, you're done. And then you might break your arm or whatever, get sick here or there. But these general chronic illnesses, even like long COVID, all of that said, long anything is attributed to bacteria. It's a bacterial issue. 100% because it's going to be an enzyme and now we're eating food that includes stuff in that food that kills weeds and that's weed killer we're eating that it's I believe it's killing the bacteria in us even cat scans cat scans either kill bacteria or or break up the enzymes because they can cause gut distress as well there's so much that they don't realize that they're doing and they're not understanding that this is the key to health is bacteria, having the right bacteria. And you have to have a certain balance. It's not going to be perfect. It's not going to be the same for everybody. But there's going to be some major components here that when you take it from a person that's 100% healthy, they have no issues whatsoever. That's going to help you. I, I mean, it's, it's, it's so obvious now, it's, it's distressing to think that our government is not looking at this. Extremely distressing. All right, I love you all.